Sauropsorygines are among the most diverse group of marine reptiles known, with a huge variety of ecologies and morphologies developing over the time they were around. Whether they be the armoured, shellfish-eating placodonts, or the beefy plesiosaurs, they spanned an astounding 180 million years, from the Lower Triassic through to the end of the Cretaceous. Early in their radiation, and the time where the most clades existed, were the Nothosaurs, marine reptiles that in many ways appear similar in appearance to living seals, which likely filled in a similar niche, though more so on a surface level, and are a very interesting group. After the catastrophic end Permian extinction events, the well-known Great Dying, which killed upwards of 80% of marine life, it took a good 5-10 to 10 million years from then for life to fully recover, alongside the harsh conditions of the Triassic that follows, like several global warming events and large fluctuations of carbon and oxygen isotopes, although not everywhere was devastated in the same way or magnitude. Some sites from areas in Idaho and Nevada showed a relatively quick rebound in diversity from what's been known of, taking about 3 million years to recover, while an even bigger outlier is known from Italy which has a very complex ichnobiota that is known to have arisen less than a million years after the extinction event, which suggests that the impact of the extinction event was not felt as severely in some areas compared to others. To fill in many of the niches left vacant, marine reptiles radiated dramatically to fill in many of the niches left vacant in the early through middle Triassic to take advantage, with ichthyosaurs, thalassosaurs, hupasuchids, and plachypleurosaurs being among the most documented. Nothosaurs, meaning false lizards in ancient Greek, were among them, and from what's known of their fossil distribution, range widely across the abundant shallow epicontinental seas and basins around Pangaea, with fossils being found from North Africa, China, and Europe in what would be called the Tethys Sea. Animals were diverse in size too, ranging from 60 centimetres in animals like Lariosaurus, and up to 7 metres in animals like Nothosaurus giganteus and Shungi, which will be talked about later. The genus of Nothosaurus, the most well-known and studied of their family, were for a long time treated as a wastebasket taxon, and so many different animals were either added into the genus or split into numerous species that have since become invalid, and the genus as a whole seems to be paraphyletic, with many close relatives of them being more closely related to some species than to others, making it harder to determine a more accurate phylogeny. The placement of the related Pachypleurosaurs within the broader order of Nothosauroidea has been uncertain, although it is considered broadly now that there is a sister taxon relationship going on between Pachypleurosauria and Nothosauria. Lariosaurus was among the smallest of Nothosaurs known, as discussed earlier, and were quite unusual in that their fingers had more bones than their toes, which meant that they would have had paddled forelimbs and more typical hindlimbs, making them good swimmers. Their larger relatives, like the many species of Nothosaurus, were also well proportioned for swimming, with them also likely having webbed limbs to help in manoeuvring and propelling themselves forward with their forelimbs, alongside steering with their hind limbs. Nothosaur skulls are especially interesting, with them being both very broad and flat, having large, supratemporal fenestrae that would have anchored very large muscles, as well as making the skull lighter, with their eye sockets also being very far forwards, seemingly an adaptation for allowing large muscle and snapping power. Their jaws themselves are lined with dozens of needle-like teeth, which would have allowed them to effectively spear and grasp soft-bodied animals like fish and cephalopods, and very likely other, smaller marine reptiles as well. They also possess pronounced lateral nasal glands that were likely used as salt glands, with them likely coming up to the surface of the water while swimming, and then excreting excess salt out of them to continue drinking said water without having large build-ups of it. When it comes to the largest of them, Nothosaurus jongi, described recently in 2014, is currently known of to be the largest member of the genus, with the holotype having a lower jaw of about 65cm in length and 45 in width, which is the largest known of any Triassic Sauropterygian so far discovered. Taking this and comparing its size to other Nothosaurs, it's very likely that these animals were anywhere from 5 to 7 metres in length, in spite of how fragmentary they otherwise are. Being the largest predator in their environment, they would have more than likely fed on small to even medium-sized marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs and likely other nothosaurs. Their movement in the water and how they locomoted from the way of direct evidence, mainly trackway marks, are surprisingly rare, considering fish and tetrapods today commonly make said markings on the seabed when they are foraging and moving. The Guanling Formation in Yunnan Province, China, is known well for its stunning fossilised sea animals, and on a survey of the area, several track marks were noted on a ledge and later published on in 2014, with it being found that there were 350 exquisitely preserved prints that formed about 15 distinct trackways, some of which were looped around. In finding out the track maker, the obvious animals to look to are marine reptiles, since in this case, the size of the tracks pretty clearly rules out fish or arthropods. The imprints were more likely to be made exclusively by the forelimbs too, for two main reasons. 
The first being that there was no case found of a print of any identical hind limb or foot over printing a forelimb print, and two, that Mesozoic marine reptiles use their forelimbs a lot more than their hind limbs, and also in more dynamic ways for their locomotion. The marine reptiles from Luping and the slightly younger Panchen locality include ichthyosaurs, pachypleurosaurs, placodonts, proterosaurs, and nothosaurs, though several can be ruled out for different reasons. Pachypleurosaurs can for being too small, being about 10 to 20 centimeters in total length, placodonts for having distinct fingers with long claws, and it is also not too clear as to how any of these groups would have been able to bend the hand sideways to produce the reported prints. Of the remaining reptiles, ichthyosaurs power their swimming by lateral whole body or tail sweeps, and so it is very unlikely that they would have used them for any kind of pushing locomotion. So, out of the animals left, it was made clear that they were made by some kind of nothosaur, since they were theorised beforehand to mainly use their forelimbs when it came to propulsion. This therefore confirms that nothosaurs were using their forelimbs for not only propulsion, but for punting across the sea floor as well, doing so in unison rather than alternately. The animal in question was anywhere from about a metre to three metres in length, and from previous work done in the area, it's been determined that said seafloor at the time was covered by a rich microbial mass, which substantially contributed to the preservation of the tracks, and to how they lasted so long. From this, it's envisioned that the animal that made them was foraging around this area, punting forwards at slow speeds, keeping the heads clear of the turbulence below, and allowing them to dart their slender necks from side to side as they search for prey. Reproduction-wise, it's been found from gravid specimens of the small pachypleurosaur, Kytrosaurus hui, from the Middle Triassic of China that's the underwent viviparacy, aka live birth, something that would have been further assisted by the Skillosaur anatomy. The four embryos present in the specimen, which are mostly articulated, are preserved on two sides of the body, which shows that these animals had a pair of oviducts, as seen in ichthyosaurs and many extant lizards, which given their shared ancestry, would have been the case in nothosaurs too. Something well documented in ichthyosaur embryos is that their babies are usually positioned with their heads forwards, as is seen in modern cetaceans, that specimens with the heads backwards represents an abnormal condition which may well have led to the death of both the mother and the embryos. Most of the embryos in the two known gravid specimens of Karchosaurus have their heads backwards, and similarly, them and their mothers might have been killed during birth because of an abnormal carriage. The loss of a solid connection between the pelvic girdle and sacrum is not only correlated with an aquatic lifestyle, but also allows for more flexible relative movement and with the absence of a firm sacroiliac joint, would have allowed their pelvic girdle to change its shape, maximising the space of the birth control to allow their young to be born, and as untimely a manner as possible. Nothosaurs have often been thought of to have been semi-aquatic, being similar to seals in some regards, and this is often something depicted in art too, with animals overall indeed looking like they can most definitely haul themselves onto land for extended periods. Set claims, however, have been questioned, and many now highly doubt that nothosaurs, especially the large ones, would have been able to effectively move out of the water. Regarding mobility, they have very stiff torsos, something down to their extremely numerous and tightly packed gastralia, with poor muscular support from their pectoral girdles, which have tiny scapula, would have made land hauling even more tiring and cumbersome. Further adding to this is their finger and toe bones all being flattened, poorly ossified and rounded, which along with being very few in number and loosely articulated, would have meant that the range of motion in their arms would have been very limited. Nothosaurs persisted a good amount of time, lasting from around 242 million years ago until about 208 million years ago in the Ratian Age, and had a good run, being among the best examples of early marine reptile radiation, and how a range of animals took up to a secondarily aquatic lifestyle. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.